Hello there, everybody. It is Dub Designs. Uh, today we are taking a look at another course. Uh, this one's by another one of my subscribers called Little Evil 7. Uh, the name of the course is Treasure Island. Uh, he did say this was one of his first courses, if not his first course, uh, which is it's always good to, to help out the, the new designers because they are going to be the, the blood of our community here in a few years. Uh, Going to be playing on the back tees and pin one. It's nice to see you have four pins. Would love to see more than two tees, though. Uh, I think I'll just keep it with everything else default. And let's get out there. Now, I'm uh, sorry I've been a little slow with content recently. I've been very busy. Been working uh, more than 60 hours a week right now, so uh, getting any content out has been quite difficult. But, uh, we're here today, ready to go. Oh, yeah. It's like a uh, fantasy course type build. A lot of uh, giant clips. Now, now you said this is one of your first courses. Uh, this right here is something that I did as well in my first courses. Probably, probably way too many courses. Uh, you will want to avoid any large cliffs at all like this. Uh, it's fine to have them. Say, say you got this over here. See how this looks like a nice little cliff edge. I mean, it is steep as hell, but this this passes as a good cliff right here. These. Just, if you had that same look right there over here, that would be great. Uh, same thing up here. You want to avoid things like this, where you've got big, sharp edges. Now, that's just one thing you always want to keep in mind, is sharp edges uh, in this game are usually just a no-go. Like, I understand you wanted to do these for decoration, but maybe there's a different uh, object or something that you could place here for decoration instead of doing uh, pillars. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's see if we can try to find our routing here. So we got one, two. This course seems to go all the way around through everything. It's always nice when a designer does use all of the land available. Because it really sends you on a journey around the map instead of keeping you in one area. Now it does look like uh, we are playing a fantasy type course. Uh, which I love fantasy courses. Fantasy courses were some of my first courses I ever built. Uh, the main reason why is fantasy courses are a hell of a lot easier for new designers to build because you don't have to abide by the same rules as a regular course. Like, you could do stuff like this on a fantasy course and have it play nice and fun, but you can't do stuff like this on an actual type course. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you want to, if you like these types of courses, if you like doing fantasy builds, this this isn't bad right here. This is a an okay way to go, but if you're wanting to do real, more realistic courses and uh, maybe get seen by the community a little more, because one thing is, is when you do fantasy courses, you're knocking out about half of the entire community who's going to play your stuff, maybe even more. There's a lot of players who play this game for the realism and not so much for the uh, fun, hit your ball in the water four times the hole type stuff, which is, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing with game. You can play it how you want to. But I think we've seen enough from the sky here. Very interesting, it looks like. It's going to be a... Oh, is this our driving range? Oh, yeah, I think this is our... I want to say this is our driving range. This might be a hole, actually. This might be multiple holes. We'll have to see when we get down here. <laughs> I just noticed that. Uh, it's like a skull. I will say, I really like this. I just think it would have been cooler to have water flowing out of the eyes, so it's like he's crying. Alright, let's get down there. Alright, on to our first hole. Uh, one immediate thing I noticed is you never want to enlarge plants this big. They will look very weird when the wind is moving fast. The wind's only moving one mile per hour right now, and you can already see how much sway it's got in it. 
these you can kind of get away with this, but these types of plants, there are certain ones where if you look at them, you can see you can see how big the flowers are. It just looks a little off. And also it's right in my line of sight. If this was removed, I could probably actually see a bunker or two, maybe even the fairway from here. Yeah, I could definitely see this bunker back here uh, if this was removed. Same thing with this one over here, I could see. I could also see the whole strip of fairway running up. And down here to a hole. I like the little catch area you've got here. A tree to add some accent in. Uh, whenever you're doing fairway trees, it's nice to have them like this, where most of the tree is just a, uh, a trunk. And the top of your tree is the only spot with foliage, so that your players can get lines of sight around and through the tree. Do like that. Nice contact on that one. Oh, I might hit it. <laughs> that worked. That's a John line I've never heard. Easy, there's squirrels there. Very interesting. Oh yeah, got some big slopes going in here. Now, I'm going to be judging this course completely differently than how I judge a normal course because this is a fantasy course and it is a new designer. Uh, fantasy courses, as I said, get to abide by their own rule set. So these red slopes and stuff like this are more okay. Uh, the one thing I would have liked to see, though, is I would have liked to see the green from the from the fairway down here. I understand it is a par 5. And this is also what I was talking about with uh, making the plants too large. Uh, they, they just move so much, it just looks really weird. So just try your best to use different objects, objects that are a lot bigger. Maybe use some big shrubs. Uh, and I don't think there's really much you can make this big feasibly without it looking weird. Not too bad. Ooh, get on out of there. Oh yeah, this is nice. I do like this. This could have been done a little nicer. Maybe instead of having it be all the way up here, you have this entire bank down this low. So uh, lower these two slopes down. Because I can't even see the green from here. If you lowered all this up here, I could see the green. Which that's just, that's one thing you always want to have in mind, whether it's a fantasy course or a uh, real course. You want to have uh, visuals of all your sidelines. Uh, in terms of actually down here on the ground, uh, I like most of this green. I don't like this, this little ridge right here. I think these mounds are fine with how big this green is. I just think this ridge is... It's kind of useless, honestly. Especially, you can't pin any of this up here, so this whole area is just a no-go. It's just a dead zone for players. Uh, flattening this would give you another pin location, moving this around. I mean, it is a fantasy course, but even still, this isn't... There's no need for a slope there. Uh, on fantasy courses, you want to have your slopes with a purpose. You either want them punishing or rewarding your players, usually. You want slopes players are going to aim for to hit on purpose, or slopes that are close to, uh, to where you want your players hitting, where it's going to punish them if they hit it into it. Mm. I don't know how I feel about the uh, these edges. I don't know. Do you guys like them? I, I always like uh, heavy rough covering all my edges like this. It's definitely a style. In terms of this hole, I like it. But you're, this is the line of play that every single player is going to hit down. So you doing this fairway up here is almost useless in a way. It's just so far out of the way. Why would a player even hit up to here? And it's giving them maybe a slightly better angle into the green but in terms of risk reward this is extremely risky 
There's this. I mean, I'm going to be hitting a little bit behind a tree. But, damn, this is just... That's just a scary one. <laughs> Actually, this tree might even be blocking this way. Dang, that makes this hole really hard. You gotta put some movement on your ball then. If you wanna go around to the left, and I still got it because I fasted it. Well, that's too bad. Overall, this is a okay, up very a hard hole. Like sitting up a little bit for you, though. <laughs> I do like your. Uh, your artistry. This is something that I would keep in your back pocket. Of course, as time, uh, you get better at it, but in terms of stuff like this, uh, players love to see stuff like this on courses. It's just a matter of actually making it practical, because as I said, fantasy course, this is okay, but real course, this would be a no-go. would not be able to do something like that. Just hit a little way up out here. I messed this hole up. And we're back in the fairway. This lady looking all sad. See, in this uh this hole as well, I would have liked to see this green maybe down down at this level right here, so that I could see uh all this work you've put into the green. Because this is a beautiful look, but it's not useless, but it's not as good as it could be when you can only see it from above. I would love to be able to see that skull from down here as well at a uh, eye level. So that's one thing, just as you're designing, you want to move your camera down to eye level where your players are going to be, just just to see what they're looking at. And that also comes with playtesting, just playtesting your course a lot. Uh, it gives you an idea of where your players are going to end up, what they're going to see, what everything's going to be like. Oh wow. Uh, bunkers on this biggest slopes are just a no-go. I would say even in fantasy courses. These are just... It's just really impractical because uh, the big thing is, is your players are going to get a lot of roll in these and bunkers aren't really meant for your, for your golf balls to roll in, honestly. This is such a big slope, your ball is going to possibly land up here and roll all the way down to here. Also, these edges are just so severe that there's no chance of your player hitting any decent club out of any of these. This is a, let's see, 13. Dang, that's a, that's a 20 foot from this lip down here. Same thing with that bunker over there. I can tell you that you put some work into kind of sculpting them, but uh, honestly, they're not really needed. Because if your player misses over here or over here anyway, they're already in a tough enough spot, so there's really no point in it. Uh, in terms of this, I actually kind of like this right here for a fantasy course. I uh, would have maybe not done rocks. Instead, I would have used like a uh, bush or something. Just because rocks can have your golf balls hit them and bounce in all kinds of directions. It can just be a little unpredictable, especially to have them this close to play. Uh, yeah, definitely creating a tough course here with all these sight lines in these tight areas. Deep stuff. You might need a, a club or two extra on this shot. Bad, not bad. Uh, one thing, uh, same thing with the visual thing. See these bushes just block the green. It's just something you want to avoid. These bushes would have been a lot better off behind the green. I understand your player's going to be a little bit raised up here. But still, it's just it's just something you want to keep in mind. Oh, we're going to do something a little stupid. Oh! <laughs> Actually, very close. There's a lake back there. Well, that's the same lake. I will say, I do like your lake sculpting. Uh, while it is some sharp drops for a fantasy course, these are some great lakes. Really do like them. I like uh, all the little ponds you've got around the course that are kind of elevated. Well, let's just uh, I'm sure we'll see some more as we keep going. But I, I, that is one thing that I, I like a lot. Sitting at two over. All right. Where does it go? 
Again, this will be the last time I say it, but uh, just with these plants, you want to avoid using plants this big. Be the last time you hear that from me. In terms of the water down here, this could have just been cleaned up just a little bit. I don't know why you would have a little pond here and this there. Just just a little bit of cleaning, making the edges a little more defined. I think this water body would have been really nice coming up around really close to your bunker and kind of caressing it in a way. Our drive is flying everything. It's always one thing you want to be careful of as a uh, designer. You can put all this work in into putting bunkers and creating this nice little area. Players don't want to just uh, be able to fly it. I guess on this hole it is. Holy so This is a par six. I realize I've never even played a par six in this game. This is technically allowed. <laughs> Here's our second shot on the fifth. Now, can't really give you too many hints on a par six, except. Probably don't. I don't know. Well, what I should have said was this looks like a you know what? <laughs> I don't know. Par six is just so so unconventional of a of a hole type. First of the green here. Mm, I don't know. Something's just not sitting right with me here. I don't know if it's this wall here. The fact that this green is just so. I think this green's fine being actually back inside of this area. I just think this little mound here didn't really necessarily need to be here. It would allow players to see your water and your waterfall and all this planting over here. Instead of it just kind of blocking it out and you're actually seeing the ugly side of the green instead of the beautiful side of the green over here. Uh, this tree, I just would have moved it maybe over to here. Just to kind of have it away from the green because that is sitting right on the green edge almost. I do like the idea of having a green kind of go back in this corner like this. Ooh, got that mound. And this is the first time we've seen this. Uh, just avoid pins on yellow. It's just uh, a general rule of thumb. Pins on yellow, orange, and red uh, in this new game are just not a thing. I know you said you made this game in 2K21. Which was a lot more acceptable then. Oh, I like that bridge. And you're sitting at one over par at the moment. Six hole coming up. Sorry about that little jump cut. Uh, I do really like this bridge here. Uh, this is. Yeah, I really like this bridge. I. I think this is all custom made. I don't think there is a bridge with railings like this. There might be, but I don't think there is. I feel like you... I don't know, I could be just tripping, honestly. But I, for some reason, I feel like this is a custom-built bridge. It may not be, though. I don't see any... It just looks a little too uniform. Uh, yeah. I... Yeah, I'm just going to hold my piece there. I don't know if it's custom-built or not. But if it is, it's very nice. Even if it's not, that's I like that bridge. I do. Uh, this green, pretty big. One thing I always like to avoid is uh, these sharp edges like this. Instead of doing your fairway like that, just kind of bring it up and bring it smooth. Kind of like uh, follow my cursor and just kind of smooth it into the green. Instead of having this hard, hard angle right there. Same thing over here, if you just brought this in just a little smoother with this edge, it would look ten times better. You wouldn't even notice that this comes in like that. And I guess a little consistency thing here. I haven't noticed this really yet, but this bunker has got a light rough uh, edge and this one does not, which that could just be because you're considering these waste bunkers and this is a regular bunker. But just, just an idea to keep in mind. Actually, I like fairway or uh, par threes like this. I have the fairway pretty much running all the way up. 
to the T's. Yeah, I like this this type of fairway here. Maybe just a little work on your edges of the fairway. Just a little couple flattening tools here, making a smooth slope. Get up. Oh yeah. I approve. Get ourselves a birdie, maybe. And this would be nice to sink the uh, down. Oh yeah. Right oh yeah. Well done. What a wild little round so far. Teeing off now on the seventh. This this is a fantasy hole right here. This is a pure blooded fantasy hole. Purely penile. Have one way to go. Massive mound. I really don't have many issues with this right here, especially being on a fantasy course. It didn't feel as clean as <laughs> it did exactly what it was meant to do. Oh, Scared me on my drive. Setting up for didn't hit it. Ouch, I'm gonna go the other way. And this is what your yep. shot's looking like. This is uh, this is where these fantasy courses get you. Ooh, into the drink. It wasn't even a big miss. There we go. I only took a few balls. That's what I was saying at the start of this uh, round is you're playing fantasy courses. A lot of players are not going to enjoy holes like this. Holes where they are going to end up hitting the ball into the water multiple times on a hole. It's just very frustrating for a lot of players. and They'd much rather play a real course. Uh, but, I mean, people who like fantasy courses, this is a nice fantasy hole here. The only gripe I have is this pin, as I said earlier, should not be here. You've got a whole bunch of other pinnable areas, and you slapped it right in the middle of a red slope. But other than that, I really like this hole for a fantasy course. Bunker night might need a little work. Bunker sculpting is something I'm probably going to do a video on here soon because it is one of the hardest things in the game to get right because of how the uh, bunkers kind of react to your flatten tool. Dang. I was expecting that to go, uh, go up over that hill. <laughs> stroked out. Oh, I can't remember the last time I've stroked out on a hole like that. That was just a uh, extremely difficult hole on this course. That would have been great as like a uh, number 9 or a number 18. That would have been a, a fantastic hole. Give me just a second here. I'm going to uh, mark down my notes. I'm going to be making a video on uh, bunker sculpting uh, here soon. Uh, just so I can help people out because I know a lot of people have issues with bunker sculpting and I feel like I've gotten it pretty well down now. I do like this whole nice little short gravel par 4 with a little funnel leading up to the green. Always nice to have something like that. Little cottage kind of close. Pretty simple little green here, nothing super fancy. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, too, uh, when you're making courses is green consistency. So if you're going to have greens with red slopes all over them, keep greens with red slopes all over them. If you're going to have flat greens, keep flat greens. Uh, consistency is just something you always want to have. Like This is very similar to the last green, but nothing like some of the other greens we've seen on this course. Now, one thing I could tell here, uh, this is a stock shape right here that you've used to flatten. Uh, you want to you wanna avoid, I mean, you can use stock shapes to flatten. It's just look at this green and look at how little movement there is on it. Nothing over here is moving. Nothing up here is moving. Nothing over here is moving. So all this requires for you to do is take the raise tool, make it really big, maybe make it go up a foot, and then place it like right here. And that side slope is going to add just a little bit of movement to your green. Not a lot, but just a little. Just enough to get your green really going. Because uh, just having these perfectly flat greens, I mean, if there's a pin up here and I'm right here, all I've got to do is hit a straight putt and I'm in the hole. There's nothing really, really to think about when you've got flat putts like that. 
little uh, wayward shot. Get that on down there and in par. See what I mean? That was just, I mean, I could have been 30 more feet away over here and still had that straight of a putt. Oh, wow. For a fantasy course, this is a great hole. For a real course, this would be not so good. Uh, one thing I always keep in mind, too, uh, I know there's, I'm not particularly a person who cares that much about it, but I know there's a lot of designers and a lot of players that want, uh, if they're ever having waterfalls, they want it to be realistic. So they want the water to be fed by uh, a water source and they want the water to actually look like it's flowing down and into a body of water instead this one's just kind of flowing down and into a wall so like if you were to do this on a real course maybe make this water not as deep of a drop raise that water body up to the top of this and then just have this curve off and down into the the river down here or the, the ocean same thing with this one just have it come down here maybe into the ocean maybe into this body uh and then maybe and you would have to do a whole bunch of work for that but having a some type of water body to feed these as i said not something that i personally uh, care about that much but i've started to pay more attention to it just because i notice a lot of the community actually really cares about it but it's just a little thing that they typically pay attention to this green i really don't mind this right here especially for a fantasy course this is actually cool to have a bunker uh because it's not like you're actually there's you're not even pretending you're gonna put a pin here this is just straight up unpinnable this is just a green part of a green that's caressing this so i actually really like the idea of this uh you could actually you might be able to pull this off on a real course, to be honest with you. Put just a smaller bunker and a smaller green. Uh, you could probably do something like this. It's actually a cool idea. Uh, in terms of all this, I understand why you put this here to make it kind of a challenge. But same thing as I was saying earlier, kind of blocks the visual on your green. And 90% of players aren't really going to have an issue with that. They're going to hit their shot in the fairway and just kind of hit it over. Again, green's too flat. This is that same stock shape right here, I'm pretty sure. Around. Yeah, the, you can tell you just flattened this and just left it. You didn't actually put any movement into it. So if I'm anywhere up on this top tier, it's a straight putt. Which... Not gonna lie, that is something that I did for a long time when I first started designing. Uh, I designed way too many courses off the bat. I was pumping out courses like crazy in the original The Golf Club game. Uh, and a lot of my courses had flat areas like that where I, in my mind, I was like, if they hit the green, they deserve to get the butt in there. <laughs> That's how I used to think. Uh, nowadays, I always put some challenge into my greens to make sure players are going to have at least something to think about. Looks like this one's safe. Oh, a little bit too much roll. I do like this hole. I like the idea of it. Definitely a tough one. Off the tee. I think, it, I don't know if it's just me, but these greens are getting bigger and bigger. This is a massive green right here. Holy. Yeah. I feel like the greens at the start of this course weren't really sizable, or at least that crazy sizable. But now they've just grown into elephants. That's another thing. A lot of uh, designers mainly pay attention to is having greens consistent sizes. When you start having greens all kinds of sizes, just gets under a designer's nerves. It doesn't bother me, honestly. Having greens all kinds of different sizes, I think it puts in more character. I know it's a thing that a lot of people don't like. So typically when you're going to make a larger green, you want a reason for that green to be larger. 
whether you're making it larger because there's a lot of movement in it, you're making it larger because it's a long part three, you want to have some reasoning behind having a huge queen. So far, so good for I like this hole. I think your tee box getting bumped back another 30, 40 yards would have been good to bring all that stuff into play. Oh, goodness. This is uh, going to be spicy. Yeah, that's on an orange. Wow. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, last time I'll say it, unless we see another pin like it, but just avoid pins on yellow, orange, and red. You want to have it on the uh, the green, smoother slopes. Because I am not going to have a fun time, most likely, here. Oh, I hit it right to the area I needed to miss. That's actually great. If I missed it over here, I was afraid I was going to roll all the way down. So close, which you could have play tested this course. I don't know if you have or not, but you could have play tested this to see if the ball would actually roll down the slope or roll backwards or whatever. Uh, this hole did not need that tree. I'm gonna come out and say it. Green's already hard enough. Getting anywhere close to the pin on a hole this far. Uh. You also, you just don't need these pillars. I understand why you did it for the visual, but you could use a bush here on this corner, or maybe there's some. You could use something else here instead of using a uh, brick. Because I mean, I look at this. This is that's blocking my view to the pin completely. Which I mean, the pins, it's it's perfectly concealing it. Actually, it's pretty funny. But yeah, this uh, this one little tree is just. Not really needed, to be honest. <laughs> that's that's what I was talking about. Which these things would be fine kind of behind your green, I think, but having them directly in the line of play like this is a bit of an issue. I do like the idea of this green, though. That's one thing I notice a lot with uh, newer designers. They always have great ideas. Uh, it's just hard for them because they don't know the designer fully. Uh, when you know the designer fully and you have great ideas, you can make some amazing courses. It's just a matter of actually uh, spending more time learning the designer, browsing the community, looking at other courses, stuff like that, uh, which I'm not going to be light with it. the designer is difficult it takes a lot of time to learn it's there's nothing easy about it i'm trying to help people as much as i can with my videos and i know there's plenty of other designers out there who try to help people but there's a lot of things you just got to learn yourself just in here playing play testing your courses and you'll learn things people don't like you learn things that people do which you're Definitely taking some steps. I mean, oh, just reaching out to another designer, asking them to look at your course is a great step. This gives you some some new ideas, another perspective on things. That's the biggest thing, uh, which is something that I didn't have for years because I didn't even realize there was a community in this game. So I've only had my perspective for my first seven years of designing. and I didn't start actually getting anyone looking at my stuff and giving me feedback until this past year. Which, luckily enough, I have, since I have been designing for that long, I've been able to get myself to a spot where I'm very comfortable uh, with my own courses, so I didn't really need a whole bunch to learn uh, from other designers. It's just now I'm, I'm getting new ideas from other designers. Sorry about that little rant. <laughs> uh, coming on here to 15, I always like uh, holes with this little water's edge. I don't think you needed these trees here, honestly. I think the water is punishment enough for your players, or danger enough at least. Especially on this long of a hole, this is a monster. Yeah, just, uh, just the palm trees aren't needed. Good shot. I do like the uh, view on this hole, though. This is a nice hole. The only thing is, though, uh, 
we've seen some of the other holes on this course, and this so far is the the single most tame hole out here. There's nothing crazy going on here, which not bad. It's a good hole. It's a great hole for a uh, a regular course. It's just the same thing as I was mentioning earlier with consistency. If your holes are going to be crazy, might as well make them all crazy. Ooh, massive drop here. Yeah, this is that tee box we were looking at earlier. Yeah, this is that tee box. Yeah, uh, just as I was saying, these mounds, uh, you could replace these with bushes or trees or something else. Yeah, these mounds, I hate to say it, they're just ugly. They're just... They're just not something you usually want to have on a course. Now this right here is a better idea of how to do a big bunker. It's just, as we can tell, your uh, bunker sculpting wasn't... Uh, you probably honestly didn't need to do any sculpting in it. Doesn't look like you did. Because I know your other bunkers, I could tell you used the flat tool. You might have been scared to use it. Which, <laughs> I don't blame you. Using, using a flattened tool or a raised tool in a bunker can be a, a scary experience. Because these things, man, they move so weird whenever you do all that type of stuff. Ooh, I really like this bunker, actually. I'm a fan of bunkers with uh, raised edges that come up kind of like, it's almost like an infinity bunker. Kind of flows up here with this top horizon. Up the hill. You've got a nice, nice flat area down here. This is kind of my type of bunker, my style of bunkering. Uh, big bags with flat bottoms in them. In terms of your hole here, I will say this. Well, I do like the waterfalls. These cliffs are a bit too much. This is what I was mentioning earlier with these big cliffs. This is why you want to avoid them. You see how the uh, texture on these just looks stretched, like really stretched. That is pretty much the main reason why people avoid these, is because they just look so weird when you have such sharp drops. Like, just comparing it to... I think there's another area up here that actually wasn't that bad. Yeah, this right here. Comparing it to this, we've got some character, some movement, and the texture isn't near as stretched, and it looks a lot more realistic, uh, which I think this is just straight up from one of the tools. I don't think you actually came in here and <laughs> sculpted all this yourself. I'm pretty sure this is just one of the flattened tools. As you can see, it did it over here as well. It has these big, nice little arches, kind of like arms reaching down. But that's that's usually why people avoid these right here. I really love the water on these. Uh, I guess this is the island map. The delta or whatever it is called. I love this super bright blue water. Or this dark blue water. It's just beautiful. Bounce right. Come on. All right, let's take this for Not too bad. All right, coming down to our last two holes. Here we go. Hole number seven. Holy crap! No wonder I did not see this hole. Where the hell is this thing? Oh wow! Yeah, that thing is uh tucked. <laughs> yeah, but as a, I don't even know what to say about this. I mean. It's a cool, cool idea. Especially cool for a fantasy course. Wow. I'm just at a, at a loss for words. I guess that's that's one of the main goals when you're building a, a course is to uh, have your players just not even know what to say, not even know what to do when they get up to the tee box. Okay, on the green I'll state. say that. This hole left me a little speechless. Ooh, just, just missed. Not even... <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's very interesting, I'll say that. And you're currently sitting at five over. Let's see what 
Yeah, if there's one hole I'm gonna remember on that court, on this course, it's that hole that was a uh, very interesting. Oh my goodness. So this is what this hole is. I was thinking this was like a driving range, but it's like a uh, damn par six. <laughs> uh, one other thing, just avoid par sixes entirely in the future. It's just most players, and by most, I mean, I mean, I I can't really make that judgment, but. Me, personally, I think par sixes just don't have any place, even on a fantasy course. It's just they're so out of place on a golf scorecard. They just look so different. They play so different. Uh, I'm sure there's a way that you could actually design a proper par six, but in terms of regular, uh, like, People who do it in this game, it's usually just smack it as far as you can, smack it as far as you can, smack it as far as you can. It's, there's usually not a lot of thinking when most people design par sixes. And that's a plunker. Plunker? Come on, John. It's not that bad. We'll say even though it's a par six, a very interesting hole here. I like the idea of it, and you're playing through the waterfall and the this big area down here. Oh, it's like little cave holes. You don't get to see them very often, though. Uh, so a lot of weird physics when the camera is under rocks. Good luck here. Nine feet away. Oh. And we dropped it. Yeah, that was a par 74, so if those two sixes were fives, that would be a par 72. Not bad course for a uh, new designer, honestly. I could tell you my first courses were a lot worse. Like, really bad. Uh, I really enjoyed some of the holes out here for a fantasy course. You probably had five or six holes out here, which were great ideas, played good, and only need minor touching up. Um... Uh, I would say for the rest, uh, they just need some work. Uh, there's just a couple things here and there, like Ray's lowering some bunkers, uh, doing some more sculpting work. But that's all stuff you're going to learn with time. Uh, just keep that ambition up. Keep learning. Keep figuring out more stuff. And I'm sure we've got another great designer on our hands here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.